Hey guys, how's it going? Michael Troy here, and today we're looking at the Uncanny X-Men Annual by Chris Claremont and Michael Golden. All right, so I just noticed, and of course I was aware of the fact, but uh, Claremont and Golden worked together on Avengers Annual 10, and Al Milgram drew the cover, and it was very lackluster. And now you've got John Romita Jr. drawing the cover for a Michael Golden interior, and what the heck, why is Michael Golden not drawing the covers? I just had to get that out of the way. Another thing I'd like to get out of the way is please subscribe to my channel, hit like, and I super appreciate it. If you like reminiscing over old comics like I do, then you should subscribe to my channel for sure. So this is a fun X-Men annual from 1983. Oh my God, that's so old. And we have Michael Golden art and um, the X-Men are playing baseball as they are wont to do. It's a tradition in the X family that uh, Chris Claremont kept going for all his years on the X-Men. And it was always fun when they played um, uh, baseball. And you'll notice this gorgeous art by Michael Golden. There's a host of different anchors on here and Brett Blevins penciled a few pages. So the art is a little inconsistent, but you do have great shots like this. This is Impossible Man as Galactus. So, and you have Xavier getting psychically attacked or something. Mohawk Storm whips into action, calling up some bad weather. Wolverine looking so cool. Michael Golden is such a great comic book artist. So many comic book artists like just uh, look at him for inspiration and he's just, he really brought a lot to the game. Um, the X-Men annuals were always so cool. Um, Chris Claremont always brought something fun and different. This is funny, this is noteworthy. This is a page swiped from uh, Jim Steranko during his uh, run on uh, Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. In case you feel interested in looking that up. I don't know, this seems unfortunate. I don't know, there's something weird and phallic about this big thing coming out of Kitty's crotch, but I don't know, maybe I'm just being a perv, but I doubt it because I don't think like that. Anyway, we get Shanna and Kazar, and it's always fun when the X-Men go to the Savage Land. I love it. It's weird with the annuals, you know, they're longer, so it's funny. That's why I think they tag team on the art a lot. Doctor Strange, cool to work in a cameo of him since uh, Michael Golden is known for his work on Doctor Strange. Emma Frost in her coma. And I love this because uh, her bouquet is the impossible man just like hiding out on, on her. And uh, Wolverine retracts his claws because they think she, he's gonna kill the White Queen. Cause you know, she used to be an enemy before she started you know, getting in troubles and stuff like that with the X-Men. Um, I don't know. Give me the impossible man, okay? I don't know if, uh, if I'm ready at this age <laughs> even to worry about the drama of a throuple, uh, throublehood, okay? I don't know, call me old-fashioned, but sounds like a juggling act. Sites. What would that trouble be? Cyclops and uh, Wolverine. How cool is this? I love the Impossible Man. He's traditionally like a Fantastic Four villain. So it's kind of fun that to see different villains used in different venues. And I guess all is well because by the end they're hanging out of the pool. He's turning into Tom Selleck and driving Kitty and Ilyana crazy because girls are boy crazy. That's sarcasm. Um... Yeah, pencils by Mike Golden, uh, except for pages uh, 28 through 32 by Brett Blevins. I wonder if you could tell which one those were. It usually stands out to me, but I'm not going to go through all the anchors. Anyway, that's X-Men Annual number 7 from 1983. Please subscribe to my channel, hit like, and I'll bring you some more content later. All right, thanks, guys.